Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Biz and Tech Podcast. My name is Blake Dowling. I'm the CEO of Aegis Business Technologies here in Tallahassee, Florida. It is almost time for the holidays. Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's, time off, but also time for hackers to go after your data. If you see a suspicious phone call, text, email, USB drive, don't engage, don't respond, don't click. Be on the lookout, double check, verify, as hackers use the holiday season to try and monetize the situation. We would like to thank our sponsor, Magic Mind, for their involvement with the show today. I started drinking Magic Mind during the pandemic for a day like today when there's Zoom meetings, in-person meetings, podcast shoot, interviews, keeps the creative juices flowing, and keeps energy levels high. Thank you, Magic Mind, our good friends in California. Always a pleasure. Today, we are honored to have Ryan David Raines, Executive Director of the North Florida Wildlife Center here in the studio. And I have been to your facility, your area, your office. I'll let you clarify what you call it, but it's awesome. (laughs) What a cool part of North Florida, and we're honored to have you on the show today. Welcome. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. So let's dive right in. What is the North Florida Wildlife Center? Are you guys a sanctuary, a rehabilitation area for animals, a conservation movement? Tell us about it. Are you all the above? We are, we are most of the above. So we are, well, for starters, we're a nonprofit, a 501c3 charity with the IRS, a nonprofit facility. And we are kind of a hodgepodge of different areas. So, of course, we provide sanctuary and rescue for lots of mainly native wildlife, that is animals that have been rescued, that have gone through the rehabilitation process, but are unable to be returned to the wild. So they're rescues, but they're non-releasable. So we have lots of native wildlife that cannot go back to the wild and would be euthanized if we were not to take them in, like pelicans, owls, other native animals like that. We also provide sanctuary to some exotic surrendered pets from everything from fish to lizards to unfortunately even lemurs, animals like that. And then lastly, we have lots of non-native wildlife that is with us for education or propagation purposes, especially if they're an endangered species. And that's a lot of animals that you'd see at the zoo, animals that are perfectly healthy, that were not rescued, but were born here in the United States in captivity at other licensed zoological facilities. So we have animals from all over, native wildlife, non-native wildlife. Nowadays, we say we like to not discriminate with where the animals came from. Very nice, and you all have been open since 2019, is that correct? 2019, yeah, we, we just celebrated in September our third birthday. Congratulations. Thank you. So how did that journey start? Big question alert. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, there's a lot of history. I, I personally, I'm also the founder, right? So I, I had a big hand in starting mm-hmm. this place. I've always been, you know, an animal nerd, uh, very much into animals and dinosaurs, and that love evolved, no pun intended, into living <laughs> animals, uh, which is super cool. And I started working at zoos and wildlife centers and rehabilitation centers when I was really young in my teens. And I- uh, Who introduced you to that? Just curious. I think it was it was always innate and I was always really driven and passionate. And uh, you know, my family helped nurture that passion for sure. Way back when, I'm from Miami originally, my grandparents had gone to school with the owner of what's now called Jungle Island. It's a, it's a small zoo. And that kind of got me in the door. And I started working there when I was 14 or 15. And that was my initial experience. And I started after that volunteering and working at facilities all over, Zoo Miami, Dulstream Bird of Prey Center in South Africa, um, Parque Municipal Summit in Panama, the country. So I've been all over the place. Nice. Uh, and then I found myself here at Florida State University, go Knowles, studying bi- uh, biology and environmental science. Graduated in 2018. I moved away right after I graduated to help manage a zoo or startup zoo up in Delaware. And I was told it was going to be all sorts of great things. They convinced me to move up there. And unfortunately, it was not. And within a few months, I found myself quitting 
and uh, one of my coworkers up there became my best friend, and she also quit. Uh, and she was making her way to vet school, and she, did, you know, we were trying to figure out what we were going to do with our lives at that point. We were back at, you know, ground zero, and um, we ended up moving. I ended up moving back to Tallahassee. We all we all remember Ground Zero. Yeah, because uh, you know the only places I really had a foundation were Miami and Tallahassee, and I I still felt I needed a little bit more time away from my my family. You know, many years ago I, I had just graduated college. Um, we ended up moving back to Tallahassee. Now I was just working a normal job, and you know I was personally licensed still to handle and and rescue wildlife and I did on the side where I was living here in Tallahassee you know I was uh, rescuing animals on the side and that turned into bringing people in to help money come in for the animals to see the animals and one thing led to another and three years later the North Florida Wildlife Center and we've gone to a completely volunteer-run organization with just locally rescued animals to an organization with a crew of, I believe we're at 38 right now. That's volunteers, employees, and interns. Wow. I manage all of them myself, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, and we've gone from just local animals to animals from all over the world. We've gone to just local conservation efforts to conservation efforts all over the world. I believe our, our furthest reach right now is either Madagascar or Indonesia. I guess it's, I would say Indonesia is maybe halfway around the planet. So that's our furthest reach right now. That's one of our newer conservation partners. You can learn all about our conservation partners by visiting northfloridawildlife.org forward slash conservation. Awesome. If anyone's curious. And uh, that, that's the longer short version of the story. And so digitally, our <clears throat> listeners can find you now. Yeah. Uh, how about physically? Where are you guys located? Yeah, in, physically. Lamont, Florida, correct? Yeah. It, so we're located in Monticello. Monticello. Um, our mailing address is Lamont. We're connected to that post office, but we're in Monticello, Florida. Most people know where Monticello is. It's about 30 minutes outside Tallahassee. We're right off I-10 exit 225, or you can come to us off, off Mahan, off Appalachia, and turn on to Joaquina. We're very close. And anyone that wants to visit, again, you can visit northfloridawildlife.org to get tickets or a reservation for a tour. Unfortunately, we're still under heavy construction. So everyone that visits is uh, put with a crew member to be given a guided tour. We don't do self-guided visits quite yet, like the zoo or the Tallahassee Museum do. But in the near future, once construction is, is further along, it, it's essentially still a construction site. So, you know, we're very low on funding. We build everything ourselves. So it's going to be a couple more years, probably. Got it. Well, from someone that's been out there multiple times, the self-guided aspect of the engagement is part of the appeal, uh, learning about uh, the animals and the location. Or the, the guided. Yes. The guided. Did I yes. say we, self? Yes, yes guided to it's great you know yeah it's it's really worth the money and it's a really intimate experience you know we don't get a whole lot of complaints about that awesome so so you mentioned uh, a partner in madagascar so i was sitting uh, around the conference room table at mcclay school a couple of years ago yeah. and we were uh, nominating individuals for our matt distinguished hill. alumnus award yep. and the name matt hill jumped to the top of the page i had the honor of emailing matt in madagascar uh, Matt, long story short, went to McClay, had a career on Wall Street, yep. left Wall Street for Madagascar, and runs Green Again Madagascar, uh, all about conservation, wildlife, rainforest. So you have a relationship with Matt at Green Again Madagascar. How did that start? Well, tell us about it. Yeah, and I just wanted to say right now, Green Again Madagascar is our um, largest conservation effort. We send them the most funding. We give them the most exposure. They were our first, they're the first conservation organization other than ourselves that we ever partnered with. So naturally, they are our largest and most important conservation partner at the moment. And how I met Matt was at a conference. It actually may have been a rotary meeting or something of the sort it was several years ago here in tallahassee and i was shocked when i saw this presentation that he gave and could not leave that conference before introducing myself and letting him know hey you know we we have endangered lemurs that you are helping in the wild at, at the wildlife center 
And one thing led to another. We became very good friends. His story, as you said, is amazing and very unique. Very unique. <clears throat> and we now, other than giving them exposure, helping them get donors to the table, helping their website get clicks, you know, we give them lots of exposure on our socials. Um, we plant between 200 and 300 trees a month with them, and we fund that, that tree planting. Of course, they plant a lot more than that on their own, but we every month fund the planting and maintenance of about 200 to 300 trees, which is quite expensive. That's awesome. That is very unique commonality yeah. uh, here in Florida that goes around <clears throat> the world to uh, Madagascar. Yeah, there's actually a good amount of lemur conservation organizations in Florida, not just us. There's quite a few. I think it's because we have tropical, subtropical weather here, so mm -hmm. there tends to be a few more uh, tropical animal facilities than in other places. And then, of course, there's the Duke Lemur Center, which is a very famous lemur organization up in, I think they're in the Carolinas. But, yeah. So if you had to pick one, uh, what would be your favorite guest, uh, animal guest at the facility? Animal resident. Yeah, I, I, I like to say I don't have one favorite anything. If I were Is to, that like picking your favorite kid? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big bird guy. Okay. So naturally, my interests fall with the birds. But I really like strange animals. And most people are not bird people. So I will say one of my favorites is Boomy, our giant anteater. It's just a bizarre animal, totally bizarre, totally unique. And he has so much personality that we would have never expected out of an anteater. You know, they're very stoic animals. They don't have physical expressions the way humans or dogs or other mammals do. They're very stoic, very cryptic. So to be able to see the incredible amount of personality he has it is amazing. He's very playful at times, very sweet at other times. A totally lazy teenager, won't wake up till 11 a.m. some days. I mean, he's just a fascinating and unique animal, both physically, behaviorally, and as far as his personality goes. So other than Boomy, our giant anteater, who visitors can meet, by the way, we have an anteater encounter where you're able to meet Boomy, pet him, feed him. It's very closely monitored. You know, ant giant anteaters are large and powerful animals with those claws, but he's very sweet. And some of the, the uh, a portion of the proceeds from our anteater encounters helps fund another one of our conservation partners, Anteaters and Highways. They help rescue and conserve giant anteaters among many other South American megafauna mammals. And they're located in Brazil. That's one of our newer partners. Oh, nice. So other than Boomy, my favorite animals would be some of the birds. I'm, I'm a big bird guy. Literally, I like big birds. So the pelicans, the vultures, the hornbills. The hornbills are a big one for me, cool. for sure. We have quite a few hornbills. Well, watching Boomy uh, have a snack of some eggs was one of the more it's fascinating, interesting yeah. Uh, yeah. engagements of my year. Uh, very cool and amazing creature. The texture of the fur, uh, just wild. Yep. It's not what you'd expect. It's just so cool. And that's yep. one of those experiences that you wouldn't think you'd be able to have right here in North Florida. Uh, very special, very cool. Yeah, we're, we're surprised to see that we are one of very few facilities, you know, in the country, if not on the planet, that works with a giant anteater in the capacity and closeness that we do, especially uh, that visitors get the chance to interact with him it is incredibly a, an incredibly unique experience for sure because most of the time anteater encounters at zoological facilities are with the smaller species not with an eight foot giant anteater smaller species like the tamandua which is what people usually see in their head when you think of a, uh, of an anteater awesome now, this next question I borrowed from Rolling Stone. Uh, they embedded a reporter with Charlie Sheen a couple years ago when he was kicked off <clears throat> Two and a Half Men. And uh, the reporter said, what is a day in the life like from the time you wake up to the time you go be <laughs> to bed? And uh, Charlie Sheen's story was pretty special if you want to look up that article. But, uh, you know, we all have our routines, and I think there's no better way to get into someone's uh, life and their, what their journey is about than a, a typical day. So walk us through a typical day from, from morning to night. What's it like, man? Yeah, so I wake up, as any 
person does. Mm -hmm. I get ready for work. Normally it takes me about 30, 40 Do minutes. Do you snooze the alarm 25 times? Nope. I wake up on my first alarm. Same. I love that. Good for you. My wife's a 10, per I, 10 I, times snoozer. It drives me crazy. I don't understand people like that. I don't but it's okay. It. We're all different. Okay. We'll leave it there. Yes. I wake up on my first alarm. Kudos to anyone that does that. It's a good sign. Uh, take a quick shower, get ready for work, have a quick breakfast, have a 30 minute drive, which I very much enjoy. You know, it, it gives me time to wake up, mentally prepare, listen to some music or a podcast before I have to supervise and be in charge of many people and animals. So I like that time to myself. And I go straight to our staff building. Uh, if one of our other directors has not already gotten there, I'm normally there by nine o'clock. You know, I turn all the lights on. I set my teapot on the kettle. I'm a big tea drinker. Helps me maintain my sanity and calmness. Um, and then I feed Coda. Coda is uh, my my dog, and he's actually part of the wildlife center. He's a husky mix. He looks like a wolf, but if you ever visit and see a dog running up to your car, he could not hurt a fly. <laughs> just met, so you know. I've met him. And he is on the staff page on our website as our greeter, as our official greeter. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. and he does a damn good job. Yeah, he but does. don't don't leave your car doors open, or he will go home with you. Um, feed Coda. I sit down at my desk. I turn my computer on. I open all my tabs that I'll be working on, and turn on uh, some nice, relaxing YouTube music. And then I will normally take a quick golf cart trip over to the animal care building, check on everyone, make sure everyone has gotten the day started properly. I'll check in with Jordan, our director of animal care who is normally not in the office naturally. She's out with the animals. Uh, you know, make sure the construction projects have gotten started, that everyone's feeling well. If it's a Monday morning, I review the entire previous week's worth of data that has been inputted for all the animals. So we, have a, we use Google Sheets right now, and we have a logging system for every single animal, whether it's a fish or a giant anteater. Every bit of behavior, everything they've been offered to eat, everything they ate from what they've been offered, um, their weights. A lot of our animals get weighed voluntarily every day, if not a couple days a week. Um, so I will look over all that data and all those numbers from the previous week. And we can see patterns in behavior and health, et cetera. So it's very important that sure. that data is consistent and accurate. Uh, and it helps us a lot. Analytics are huge. Yeah. Even with living things. Right. Um, and uh, normally after that, I'll head back to the office, get some work done. And then I will go back to the animal care building and usually work with some of the birds and whatnot. Spend a couple hours over there. And then back to the office. And then sometimes I will go back to the uh animals and work with them a little bit more. So it's about, it's about 50, 50 animal care and behind the scenes operations for me. Um, some days, if not most days right now, just because we're really low staffed, especially in the office, you know, there's, there's sometimes that I'll be in the office all day and I, I really, really hate that. You know, I'm, I didn't start this to be sitting in an office, but it is, it is what it is, right? I, I do right. what I need to do to keep the animals well fed and happy and my employees and team happy, even if it means sitting in the office all day. But that's pretty much what a, a basic day is for me. I usually leave by four o'clock, go home, take care of my cat and my dog, head to the gym, go back home and work some more. Very nice. So that's a great uh, visual. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, that. no problem. All right. So shifting gears, if you could go back in time, any place, any time, uh, where would you go? And if you could change something, what would you what would you change? That's a great question. Um, you know, I would if I could start the wildlife center over again. As wonderful as everything is now, and as as much as everything has improved, and how quickly we have improved and progressed and achieved things in the last three years, there's a lot. I would I would do differently because it took me, you know, maybe the first two years to really learn how to become a good leader and a good boss. You know, that's not something you are just taught. You know, you have to learn that. 
And I would like to say I'm, I'm a great boss and a great leader now. But I would definitely go back knowing some of the things I know now and how I am now and, and change, you know, just a lot of the startup. You know, it was really, really hard starting this place. It was really difficult. It took years off my life and many people's lives. It was worth it. You know, we're doing amazing things. We have amazing animals. But I would definitely change some of the startup aspects. It'd be a lot easier knowing what I know now, especially with fundraising and whatnot, how to get more volunteers in. Um, but for, for work, that that's probably it. Um, in my personal life, I've really come out of my shell. And if, of course, if I could go back, I'd change a lot of things. You know, I'd, I'd make more friends. I'd do more photography trips, things like that. But not a whole lot. Awesome. What do you think is the proudest moment of your career? We're probably talking about it, but uh, yeah, walk us I mean, through that. Yeah, whenever, whenever I look back at how much things have changed in the last three years, it's like day and night. And how quickly we have progressed is just mind-blowing. And the conservation efforts we've taken on and the animals that reside at the Wildlife Center now you know, any time that I reflect on that is an incredibly proud moment. But I would say, for instance, when our giant anteater arrived, from that day on, things became very, very real and serious more than they were before. Because in the zoological community, this is a very high caliber animal, I'm going to say. They're very rare. They're very endangered. They're very difficult to maintain husbandry and care-wise. And we do, we do an excellent job with him. I mean, that animal is as happy as he can possibly be and is an incredible ambassador for her species. You know, our staff has progressed so much. I would say the day Boomy arrived is when things really changed for us in our career, in my career. You mentioned uh, that they're endangered. Is there data on how many are alive currently in the wild worldwide? Uh, definitely thousands. I mean, Bra Brazil is, if I don't have an exact number, it could be tens of thousands. You know, they're found across a continent and a half, um, usually uh, uh, Central and Northern South America and Central America. But to give you an idea of how endangered they are, they are already extinct in multiple Central American countries and are in danger of extinction in other countries. In Brazil, they're not. Brazil's a huge country. There's thousands of them in Brazil, right? Um, but they're one of the more endangered large mammals in Central and South America. Are they so, hunted? What's their biggest uh, threat? Uh, I would say vehicle collisions. Oof. Yeah, how, how we hit deer in North America is how they get hit by cars in Central and South America. They have very poor eyesight, very, very poor... Uh, hearing their sense of smell is immaculate but you don't smell a car coming at you at 60 miles an hour True. right um, so that's very sad and then also habitat destruction and um, hunting wh whether for their fur or meat or not you know we'll find people will kill them because they're scared that they're going to injure their dogs which of course you know, bring your dogs inside. In that case, the anteater was there first. Or farmers will kill them so that they don't dig up their crops. So it, it's mainly hunting in those senses and habitat destruction and vehicle collisions. So new question, what would it surprise us to know about you? What would it surprise you to know about me? Uh, I am very involved in music, and I was in an a cappella group in nice. college. That's a good one, right? That's a great one. Yeah, I was in an a cappella group in college. We have some uh, songs out on Spotify and Apple Music, and I'm I'm a soloist on two of them. Nice. And uh, I love I love singing. I just had a flash of uh, the guy in the office. Um, that had the acapella group. What did he go to Rutgers? His yes, character. yes. I'm um, sure you were better than them. Yeah, a little different than them for sure. Um, and we were very good. It. I don't. I'm not sure if the group exists anymore or if they're dis, uh, disassembled or still together. But um, we were very good. We competed, and now my singing, for right now, is reserved to the shower and the car. But of course, one day. Uh, 
when the wildlife center progresses more and I have a little bit more time in my personal life and don't have to work at home, I'd love to get back into singing or start my own acapella group one day. I think uh, you guys need to do a team building with your staff, have a Great talent idea. show. Great idea. And just casually bust out uh, some song. There we go. There we you. have a meeting Thursday night. I'm, I'm going to plan on that. My staff loves team buildings. The amount of groans around the table when I throw something out there. Um, although we had one really good one. You can steal this one. Uh, that acronym game. Mm. Very short and sweet. That's a good one. Name an acronym that describes you. And this young lady that used to work for us said, just right out of the gate, car. I was like, car? What is that? She's like, crazy ass redneck. I was like, whoa. Love that. She had that one already. That's great. Good stuff. Well, as we close today, let's talk more about getting out, supporting the North Florida Wildlife Center. What's a good day to come out? Uh, you have to make a reservation, correct? Walk us through how that works. Phone number, you already mentioned the web address, <clears throat> but we want to make sure people listening and watching today can check out your place because it's so cool. Uh, talking about the anteater is awesome. Um, the lemurs were really special. Eating, if you've never had a lemur eat a banana ship out of your hand, you haven't really lived, have you? So how do we engage with you? Yeah, so at the moment, we are open Wednesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. One day, we might be open seven days a week. We talk about it every now and then. But at the moment, it's Wednesday through Sunday, 10 to 4. People do show up without a reservation. There's nothing we can really do about that. But if, if you can make a reservation, that is ideal because we have time to prepare for your arrival um, and prepare for your guided tour. Because again, at the moment, due to construction, we're not open to self-guided visits, meaning you cannot just show up, pay admission, and walk around on your own. You show up, pay for a tour, and we stick you with a volunteer or an intern or an employee, and they show you around. It's fantastic. Um, you can make that reservation on our Facebook, on our socials, or by visiting northfloridawildlife.org and hitting that visit page. And guided tours are about an hour, sometimes a little over an hour. We also offer at the moment four, about to be five, when our sloth arrives. We can Sweet. talk about that. We'll be arriving before the end of the year. We offer four animal encounters. The fifth will be the sloth encounter. Everyone loves Sloth. Sloths are not endangered. This uh, sloth was born here in the United States at another zoological facility and is coming to us to be an educational ambassador because people just want so badly to see and learn about sloths. So we caved in. Um, we offer a giant anteater encounter, which I spoke about. We offer a kangaroo encounter, who you have met, Marlu. Marlu is our ambassador, Red Kangaroo. He was a little thing the first time you met him, probably. I remember, yeah. He's about my height now, but I'm short. I'm 5'7. Um, and then we have our tropical bird encounter, which if you like birds, do not miss out. It's a fascinating opportunity to interact with some very rare and exotic birds like hornbills. And then our lemur encounter, which is arguably our most popular. And our lemur, we have many lemurs, but we have two lemurs specifically that uh, participate in visitor encounters in the lemur encounter, Sokka and Akondro you have met many times mm -hmm. they are critically endangered black and white roughed lemurs and we're hoping they're both male we're hoping to acquire a female in the near future so we can help uh, expand the population and genetic diversity of that species uh, and that's pretty much it so we have the animal encounters and our guided tours in the near future we're hoping to have our outdoor amphitheater done and that's going to be a whole other experience with a free flight bird show and all that but we haven't solidified the details on that and then if anyone wants to volunteer we require eight hours a week, every week, for at least half a season or half a semester if you're a student. You can go onto our website and go to the Get Involved page to learn more about that. Awesome. We always need help. Always, always need help. We're always behind. With animal care, we're always behind. We're always trying to get ahead of the game. We have very high standards for animal care. And uh, if you want to donate, we're a charitable organization. We can get you those tax write-offs, and you're supporting a good cause. We also do corporate sponsorships, and you can have a sign at the Wildlife Center. Again, visit our website for more details on that. You can join Aegis Business Technologies, as we are a proud corporate right. sponsor yeah. of the North Florida Wildlife Center. Thank you, sir, for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. That was awesome. Got to learn a little bit today, and hopefully... Everyone watching and listening will get a chance to visit the North Florida Wildlife Center. It's really special. Thanks, Magic Mind. Make sure you pick up a box. It makes a great holiday gift. 
Uh, no caffeine, new tropics. You should try it. It goes I nice will. with your tea. Yeah, I've been looking at that. Good stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is a wrap for today. Thank you for joining us on the Biz and Tech podcast. We will see you on our next episode. Have a great day.